Welcome to today's Inlet View. I'm coming to you from my office because it seems like the appropriate place for the topic of today. You may have heard us talking lately about annual conference. This is something the United Methodist Church does around the world, but in smaller geographic areas that relate to where people live. So for us, the South Carolina annual conference of the United Methodist Church happens to be our state boundaries. People who are United Methodists in our state are part of that conference. To our north, in North Carolina, uh, immediately on the eastern side is the North Carolina Annual Conference, and on the western side is the Western North Carolina Annual Conference. So some states have multiple conferences within them. Our annual conference is a geographic border, but it's also a way of doing ministry together. And so we are connected across our, our conference and our state in ministry. We uh, have mission that we do together. We have learning, education that we do together. We share one another's ministries, both uh, literally in terms of knowing what's going on and being connected, but also in a, in a spiritual sense. We care what happens across our annual conference and, of course, across the world. We also have what we call annual conference, which is an annual meeting. So every year, about this time, we United Methodists of South Carolina get together. Now, until the past two years, those have always been in person, different places across the state. The past two have been all virtual, almost. I'll get to that in a second. When the annual conference gets together, there are equal numbers of laity and clergy who represent the churches. So when we have votes, the laity have an equal vote to the clergy in terms of making the outcome. When we uh, worship, the laity are also part of leading worship and, and serving together in that capacity, as are the clergy. It's a very uh, wonderful time of gathering together the different representations of how the ministry of Christ is done in our state through the United Methodist Church. Other things we do at annual conference include planning and budgets and receiving reports, that sort of thing. My favorite parts of annual conference are, one, uh, seeing my friends, both those who I'm close with, who I, I miss throughout the year, but even those who I've known uh, in different capacities through the annual conference that I get to see again in person. I enjoy that part. Of course, I'm missing that part this year again. The other part I enjoy is the worship, particularly the service of ordination. There's a retirement service that's special and the memorial service. Those always speak to me. As I look at, at the leaders who are coming in and those finishing their service of ministry and then those who have finished their life and um, their spouses as well are often included in that. It's really um, meaningful to watch the journey of ministry shared in those moments. This particular year, it's especially important for this church, our church, as we celebrate annual conference, because Isaac Duesenberry will be ordained during our Sunday evening 7 p.m. service. And so when I talked about exceptions the last two years to virtual worship, last year we had a representative when J.T. Brown was commissioned at his service, and this year Isaac will be in person for the ordination. It'll be very limited capacity, and I, like you, I will watch online. Hope you will join it because it's such a significant part of, of Isaac's life, but also the life of our, our church and our annual conference. I, this past Tuesday was the anniversary of my ordination. I remember well when our friends and family joined together and people from around the conference and the bishop ordained me and, and placed that red stole over my head and for the first time in my ministry was able to to be fully vested in what we do as a church. It was something that I'd worked hard for and by grace of God was able to get to. And that's where Isaac is. He has worked really hard uh, in his studies, in his uh, interviews, in his preparation, in his service among this church and in other ways of serving to get to the place where the annual conference has, has discerned that he's ready to be ordained into full membership in the annual conference. It's a great Achievement is also a great blessing, and we're excited for him. So as he gets ordained into the office of the Order of Elder, which is an ordination to sacrament, to word, to order, and to service, he'll be instructed to love and serve and pray for all the people with whom he works. I, I try to reflect on my own vows, just as I would at a baptismal renewal or a wedding, my own vows of ordination whenever I'm part of that service. I will again on Sunday night when I hear the different ways that those ordinands respond to the high calling that they are uh, placed, that is placed before them. And you'll hear 
that they will make responses. I will with the help of God. One thing we recognize before the bishop lays hands on and ordains us, before he hands us a Bible, before he says, take thou authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments, we're reminded that any ability, any authority, any acts of ministry are first by the grace of God. It is by the grace of God that Isaac will be there, the other ordinance will be there, that I am, have been there and am in ministry, that JT is in ministry, that you are in ministry, by the grace of God. But as Isaac is set apart to lead as an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church, this Sunday evening at 7 o'clock, I hope you'll join us for that high holy moment. You can find out how to get there by going to the United Methodist website for South Carolina. It's UMCSC. Dot org, umcsc.org. That's how you get there Sunday evening at 7. It's how you get there for the meetings on Monday if you want to observe those as well. All day Monday. Join us for this annual conference, another holy moment in the life of our church. Thank you.